radiance. So he's, he's got all these layers going. The same, it's, it's the sure mark of an ineffable experience that someone is just struggling like mad to get across. And if like had been as common in the Greek as it is in the English, that's what we would have had. I think in that case, I counted nine uses in, in one paragraph. Um, I want to take some time on Paul. We're in the New Testament. Jesus has been dead for perhaps three years. Crucified, which was the most shameful, ignominious, embarrassing, humiliating, unthinkable, impossible death. So he has disgraced his disciples in, in cultural terms. But his followers still seem to keep going around and spreading the message he was spreading. So here comes a really devout Jew, name of Saul. Uh, he was educated. He was a Pharisee, which means he was middle class, educated, conservative Jew. He was multilingual. Greek, Aramaic, Hebrew, possibly some, Ro some Latin because he was a Roman citizen. And he was horrified at what he interpreted as the blasphemies on Judaic tradition that were being preached by these followers of this, this criminal who had just been executed. All we really know about him is he was not especially attractive. He was short, had kind of bowed legs, didn't speak very well, but he wrote a terrific letter he wrote, in fact, 13 of them. And in a couple of them, well, a couple of them get him into this presentation today. Saul was on his way. It was, you could say, a business trip. He was going from Jerusalem to Damascus in Syria because he'd been commissioned by the high priests to go and round up as many of these followers, these Jesusites, as he could find and haul them back to Jerusalem uh, where they would be tried for blasphemy and quite possibly executed. So here he goes, all murder and thunder. Um, and his journey is interrupted when Shazam, out of nowhere, he is struck by light. He is blinded. Uh, tradition is that he fell off his horse, but there is no horse in scripture. He's just struck down, he falls, and he hears a voice that says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? <gasps> Who are you? I am Jesus Christ, the man you are persecuting. And one thing leads to another. Um, he is now blind, he, he is led by his companions into Damascus to the house of a man 
who heals him of his blindness says, hey, stay, rest. And I'm distorting some details here in the interest of brevity, but essentially, uh, he does just what VMH Atwater would expect him to do. He goes into seclusion. This life-changing experience has come upon him, and he hangs around town for a few days and then goes into Arabia is there for some indeterminate amount of time, comes back to Damascus eventually after he's had his walkabout or whatever he was doing, and ultimately gets to Jerusalem, ultimately gets approved by the authorities, and by now his life is so transformed, his name is now Paul, not Saul, and he is among the foremost of the followers of Jesus. The first of the letters he writes comes about 20 years after that experience. Now, it hasn't taken him quite that long to get this integrated, but again, this is so typical of experiencers who say, well, I really haven't told anybody about this. It was only 48 years ago. But here, finally, 20 years later, he's well enough integrated that he's, he's out doing, spreading the word. And he writes, and for those of you who care, this is from his letters, his letter to Galatia. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the good news reported by me is not a human thing. I didn't get it from any person. I wasn't taught it. It's through revelation. Now, what I am going to do in all of these quotes, lest you think I am blaspheming, I am transliterating. And where he says, Jesus Christ, I am going to word it as if he were describing a near-death experience. The good news reported by me is not a human thing. I didn't get it from any person. I wasn't taught it. It's through a revelation from the light. From now on, I live no more. Instead, the light lives in me. Even the life I have in the body, I now live by the faith of that light that loved me. Two years later, he writes to the church in Corinth. I know a person who 14 years ago, whether in his body or out of his body, I don't know, only God knows, was snatched all the way up to the third heaven. And I know that the person in question, whether in his body or out of his body, I don't know, only God knows was transported into paradise and heard ineffable things which is not for mortals to utter. Sound like anybody we know. <laughs> so another 20 years go by. And by this time, the writer Luke, writing the book of Acts, uh, tells us those details of the experience, which you'll notice do not appear in what, what Paul has said. It's, he's, he's very cryptic.
Paul's, Paul was an itinerant preacher, and he would spend uh, the years roughly from 50 of the Common Era to 64 when he disappears from the scene, presumably executed, um, traveling from place to place to place to place to place and getting thrown out of most of them. But some of his, some of his writings are pertinent to this whole theme of commonalities between scripture and NDPs. He writes to the church in Rome. I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor dominions, nor the present nor the future, nor miracles, nor the heights nor the depths, nor anything in be else in creation will ever be able to come between us and the divine love found in the light. To Corinth, he says, anyone who is in the light is a new creation. The old has passed away. Look, there's something new here. And it's all from God because God was in the light, reconciling a world to himself. So we are ambassadors on the light's behalf. You've been listening to that all weekend. Same message, we are the ambassadors of the light. Now, when we talk about mission and what a hard time we are having with ours, let me just read you Paul's description of his mission and some of what he encountered. Five times I was given nine and 30 lashes. Three times I was beaten with sticks. Once I was stoned, which incidentally, he was left for dead and could have been possibly have been the source of that NDE. Uh, once with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. Besides all the traveling, Danger of war, danger from robbers, danger from my own kind, danger from the Gentiles, danger in the city, in the wilderness, danger on the sea, danger from false brothers, with toil and labor, sleepless nights, hunger and thirst, often not enough to eat, cold, lack of clothing. God, who is also the father of light, knows. Let him be praised forever that I'm not lying. In Damascus, the king's governor stationed guards all around the city to catch me, and I had to be lowered out a window and over a wall hidden in a basket and slipped through his hands. Now that's a mission. Hopefully none of you has to go through anything quite like that though I expect that someplace in the world somebody may be doing something very similar. So we get to the gist of the mission, the message. Jane Smith says, I said to the man, can you tell me what it's all about? the whole world, I mean everything. And he said, yes. He told me in only three sentences at the most. It was so simple. I remember saying to him, of course. I wondered how on earth did I forget that? I do think I know what he was telling me. Even though I cannot recall the actual two or three sentences, I know that it has to do with love. This love, this perfection, this godness, I believe that what it is all about is that the world will keep turning and as we bring that into our consciousness and have it remain there all the time, our connection with God will be there. 
not somewhere in our unconscious. We will be consciously aware of who we are all the time. 